Back to New Day Northwest. As you may know, pickleball recently became the official sport of Washington. And it's not just popular here, it is growing in popularity all over the country. Erin McHugh is the author of Pickleball is Life, and she shared with me why she thinks so many people are falling in love with the sport. All right, Erin, well, let's talk first about the title of the book, Pickleball is Life. What do you mean? Well, I guess it's not for everybody, but for me, pickleball is sort of life. I think about it a lot. I have a friend who said, and I totally agreed, she said, I don't know, when I get home from playing pickleball, all I can think about is where I'm going to go next to play pickleball and who I'm playing with. And I said, I get the same feeling. I know just what you mean. But it's funny. Now I've also begun to think about why isn't life more like pickleball? Yes. I mean, pickleball is very egalitarian. It's fun. It's competitive, but it's kind. Everybody can play. You can always improve. It's just, why can't life be more like this? You meet new friends all the time. Absolutely. You know, my executive producer, Joseph, and I learned to play pickleball for the first time just a few short months ago. And I have to say that just infected me with excitement. I just want to play all the time. I'm always asking for someone to come play with me. So I agree with you. It is something that it does affect us in a positive way. And speaking of which, some of the folks I spoke to said that the pandemic actually impacted pickleball in a positive way. Oh, absolutely. You're right, Amity. One way was because, you know, you were so in your little pot of people and usually it was, you know, parents and kids and grandparents. And they, if you live somewhere where you could go outside, like I do, I live in, in Massachusetts near the Cape, you know, you could get your pod and go outside and and play. And even me among my own friends for a while, we when the really, really scary time of- yeah. Um, of uh, the COVID was was around, we would, uh, for a while, we just thought, well, we better not. And then who could stand it, right? So we said, okay, we're going to go out, we're going to wear masks, but we'll probably be six feet away from each other. And for a, and the mask lasted about three minutes. But yeah. for a long time, we would sanitize the balls before and after. Yeah. But I will tell you, it got everybody through the pandemic in yeah. so much easier way because you could go outside in the really, really scary times. Yeah. Um, beginning and of the have year. that community, which is what have I think we all lost for, so much of. That's right. And forget about everything for an yeah. hour, an hour and a half. You just felt free. So in that way, you know, we were not alone. What happened was uh, so many people realized that. And it got, it, it, it you know, the sport got a big bump because of that. You and I were talking about what the things we loved about pickleball and, and some of the words that came up were accessibility and all are welcome. Don't you think that that is kind of what is drawing people to this sport? I do. I do, Amity. And also uh, a couple of things to, to that. Um, one is, you know, that the first time you ever go out, probably somebody says to you, there's no sorry in pickleball. Because we as a society are all about, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, even when we don't mean it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, people say, never mind, you're going to learn, it's going to be great. But also I find that I've become sort of, and I, I'm sure you're the same, a little bit of a missionary about pickleball. Yeah. The thing. You want everybody to feel the joy that you're feeling. So you want everybody to get on board. So, you know, you are playing with newbies all the time and then they're on their way with a bunch of new people. And that's very satisfying too. Yeah, uh, it really is. It really is. All right, before I let you go, we got to talk about the crazy pickleball lingo, which is another adorable part of this sport. We got words like the Nasty Nelson, mm -hmm. uh, Golden Pickle, uh, mm -hmm. Scrub, Hinder, and Banger. Can you please just give us some explanation? Well, the Nasty Nelson is named after a person who I guess is not a very popular but well-known professional uh, uh, pickleball player. And uh, you may know that as you're serving, if you serve cross court and you hit the opposition, it's your point. But this guy started hitting the opposition on purpose. Oh, Nelson. Sorry, no, it's not very sportsmanlike. So uh, he got a bad reputation, a nasty reputation. Uh, so that's what that is. And a golden pickle is a great thing. I've accomplished it once. And, uh, you know, you are pickled if you uh, win the game. Uh, or, I'm sorry, lose the game 11 to 1. Uh, and you pickle somebody, obviously, if you win the game 11 to 1. 
If you are the server, the very first server, and you manage to serve all the way through and never give up the ball, that, my friend, is the golden pickle. Well, I strive for that. I just got to keep myself out of the kitchen, you know? Uh, you got to keep out of the kitchen. That's, that's, that's essential, and it never ends. <laughs> So many fun <laughs> roles. Uh, joined now my, by my executive producer, Joseph Setner. Still got the headband. Still got the headband. I loved learning when we did. did have you improved since that then? That was so fun over summer. Um, I have to be honest, I have not played since then. <laughs> oh, since but that day. I did quite enjoy the, our time. Have you gotten any golden pickles since then? Oh, no, my God, no. <laughs> what was funny is I actually had no idea that m a lot of my neighbors are really into are it. Are really into it. My friend uh, Dawn and her husband Carlos, they're hardcore tennis players. Uh -huh. And so I was like, over the 4th of July, I'm like, I'm not going to lie, guys. I don't know how to play pickleball. They're like, oh, we've never really played it. I go in my house to get mm -hmm. my tennis shoes. I come out. They've got their own net set up. Oh, we boy. just put it across the street, like drivers, you know, whatever. And you have to prove your skills. And then the other day, another neighbor and, and my neighbor, they were playing it too. So I was like, all right. And then they are investing in, in I mean, it's just crazy yeah. how much it's growing. I'm pretty sure there's like a pickleball court in Magnolia specifically, because I know there's a, kind of a lack of courts right now because it's an emerging I think sport. they like painted yeah. it, um, but it's not an official pickleball court where Frank took us. Yes. Was an official court. Yes, in Laurelhurst. I um, love it. But uh, yeah, I do think the tennis skills do translate because I played tennis in high school and some of that kind of came back to me. So Tennis, and here's the other thing. If you're good at ping pong, you might be good mm -hmm. at It's a little badminton-esque also. There's also that's why I excel, yeah. Yeah. obviously. Mm -hmm. um, thank you so much. Uh, that was so fun. More pickleball when we can get it here on King, uh, New Day Northwest. All right, we are